Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 171 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Barbara. What's happening, Barb? How are you? I'm good. It's the Friday before the 4th of July that we are recording, so I'm super looking forward to a three-day weekend. Just sent my youngest off to uh, Dayton, Ohio to spend a week up there with his buddy, so I am going to chill. Just saying. Nice. No major plans? No fireworks in your future? No, no fireworks, except for if you talk, well, no. (laughs) (laughs) Forget it. Yeah. You have to bleep me on that one. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so Indianapolis didn't do fireworks last year, and I'm sure a lot of people didn't, but we're kind of excited to check it out again this year. Oh, yeah. It's nice to be normal. Yeah, it's a reason to get outside. <laughs> yep. Other than running, of course. Absolutely. So I just got back from my first multi-city travel with Preet. So I got to run into a bunch of different labs for the last two days. It was really exciting. Met a few fans of the podcast while I was out. That's nice. That's nice to hear. It always is. It kind of comes up awkward in a conversation, but (laughs) it's always nice when it does. It makes me feel good. And then then I feel like they know more about me than I know about them right off the bat. (laughs) (laughs) And then you say, hey, would you like to be our next guest? Yeah, that does come up. Hey, if you ever want to be on it, let us know. Yeah. And then uh, bye from Preet. (laughs) (laughs) So you know what, Barbie, there's something we haven't talked a lot about this year that in previous years we talked a ton about. Dun, dun, dun. I wonder what this is. And that, of course, is the Race for the Future, which is at the seventh year running. So last year, COVID put it on hold, but it's back this year. If you haven't heard of the Race of the Future, it's a fundraising event that happens during the Chicago Triathlon. This year, the event is August 28th and 29th. So what it is, is a bunch of people from our industry participate in the triathlon. You know, swimming, biking, and running to raise money for the foundation of dental laboratory technology. Now, you can actually participate in the race yourself, or you can create a team and start raising money, or you can just donate to a specific racer and give back to the industry that has given you so much. Barbara's not doing it. Well, what I'd like to say about that is that I'm a runner. Usually I do the whole thing. I decided this year that I'm way too busy, but I am a fast runner and I have a very fast swimmer. So if there's any of our listeners listening that are really fast bikers or at least top mediocre bikers and want to team up and relay, hit us up at info at voicesfromthebench.com, please. So basically you're saying you're not going to take the guy that comes with a huffy bike with yeah, a banana seat and... Uh... I only do things to do them very well. So I'm not trying to be a jerk, but yeah, I need somebody that wants to freaking win. Yeah, we need to get you going because this will be the seventh time in a row you've done this event. And I've been training bad running. I've been running, 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 and I'm going to be, I'm ready. But I can't find a biker. So no biker, no race for Barbara. Well, let's see what we can find you one. So if anyone out there is into biking, Chicago area or not, let us know. We'll get a team going. And of course, Sean Nowak, who's always a top fundraiser, he's going to be doing it this year. So mm-hmm. if you need to go and give money to anyone, let's give it to Sean. Not that he needs it. <laughs> Sean actually said he would swim on my team. So that's going to be tough because we always try to beat each other. But if I don't find a biker, I'm going to raise money for Sean too. There you go. It all goes to a good cause. Yep. So we ask our listeners to go to dentallabfoundation.org or the link found on this episode's show notes, and donate to the foundation. Even if all you can do is a dollar, it all goes to a great cause of education within the dental laboratory industry. True to that. This week, we got to talk to the talented Nina, I still don't even know if I said her last name right, Nina sure Frickaten. <laughs> Frickaten. Oh, I remember when she said Bleepaten. Frickaten. <laughs> So this week, we got to talk to the talented Nina Frickaton from the UK. Now, we love talking to technicians in other parts of the world because it brings a perspective that we don't always get to hear. 
Nina started her career at a young age in Croatia and eventually found a home at Dencraft Dental Lab in England. Falling in love with removables, but being able to do it all, Nina started a path of always striving to do better work and has recently been trying to perfect her work with composites. She does fantastic work that she posts on Instagram to show us all that we should all strive to be better. Join us as we chat with Nina Frickaton. Whitmix is very excited to announce the new Pro 4K large format 3D printer from Asiga. The open material printer for the 385NM and the 405NM resins features renowned Asiga reliability and super fast print mode for large batch printing of virtually all print resins. It's ideal for printing any kind of model, denture, splints, surgical guide, impression trays, and more. As it does with other Asiga printers, the Pro 4K features the SPS Smart Positioning System technology, which ensures that the build platform is in the correct position when forming each layer, providing accuracy and continuity. The Asiga 4K DLP printer is affordable, so you can own it for under $25,000. It has a large build plate and is available in both the 65 micron and the 46 micron resolution versions. For more information about the Asiga Pro 4K, visit Whitmix.com or call Chris Fry at 513-680-1512. And as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. It's always in a, in a good spirit. It's never like... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's get started. You ready? Yeah, let's start. We'd like to welcome to the podcast, I'm already going to butcher your last name, <laughs> Nina Frickenton. Frickenton. It yeah, it's not so bad. Not so bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. For Elvis, that's really good. Just saying. <laughs> no, he did well. He did well. I heard it in much worse way pronounced. So well done, Elvis. I <laughs> <laughs> ah, appreciate that. And we're done. No. <laughs> uh, all the way from the UK, I think you might be our first international guest. Yay! I mean, we've talked to people from other countries, but not talked to them while they're in the other country, which is very exciting. And you're with Dentcraft? Dentcraft? Dentcraft. Yeah, Dentcraft without the T. Yeah. yeah. Tell us, Nina, how long have you been in the industry? For too long. <laughs> too long. <laughs> No, I started dental school when I was 14. So, wow. um, yeah, it's been, uh, I'll not tell you exactly how, how much because then I will disclose sure. my real age. <laughs> but, it's been, but it's been 20 plus years in this industry right now. Is yeah. 14 common for an age for people to start dental technology? Well, in our country, our school system is a bit different so at 14 you can choose to learn to be a cook or dental technology or an electrician Mm -hmm. so practically more manual skills or you can go to well we call it college for four years but after that you have to go to this university practically it's a bit different than in america yeah (laughs) yeah but anyway i started my school at 14 it was a course four years full time after that, we have to do a year of apprenticeship, unpaid, of course. <laughs> mm, of course. After that, we have to pass the state uh, exam. And just after that, we can become uh, dental technicians. I can tell you, we are studying like we are going to earn millions. All lies. <laughs> <laughs> All lies, deceit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you know at 14 that that's what you wanted to do or that's what you were interested in? Well, I, I, I did not want to be a dental technician. I did not even know that this existed. So what I wanted to be was a children's book illustrator. That was, oh. um, yeah, because I was drawing quite a lot and uh, painting and stuff like that. So I had already my eye to the Academy of Fine Art in Venice. So that was where I wanted to go. But my parents, being a bit more traditional, they were like, ooh, 
no no art no no art <laughs> you have wow. to take a little bit of a more traditional uh, uh, bringing so my mom was like you should go and see this dental technology they are doing all these uh, like um, little bits and uh, like waxing up and stuff you should go and just check it out so i was like okay so i went in the lab and uh, for a week and i was hooked i do think the dental technology is artistry so i just oh, fall in of course yeah, I just fall in love and decided yeah that's my uh, calling and yeah 20 years plus i'm still here which lab did you check out was it dencraft no it was a uh, uh, so i'm croatian i'm half croatian half italian so i started okay. my career yeah i started my career in croatia and it was just a local lab that was in our city that uh, mm -hmm. took me in for this week to you know, just like to see, to, to get the feel of uh, if that would be something that I would like. So, yeah, I worked actually in Croatia for some years. I worked in Slovenia and then uh, also, and then an opportunity came to move to the UK 10 years ago. So I took it and I moved to the UK and I'm still here. I'm still here, so it could not be so bad. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing in the lab right now? Uh, as a dental technician in Croatia, everything. We don't, yes, we, exactly, <laughs> exactly. We don't we don't specialize in just one thing. We don't specialize just in prosthetics mm -hmm. or in implant work. Or when you grow up and work in Croatia and smaller countries, more stuff you know, more valuable you are for the business. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it makes so, sense. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, I I do everything. Yes, I do everything. I do. But my passion are dentures because nobody mm. likes them so much. <laughs> yeah. So true. and to do a good yeah, true, true. And to do a good denture, I think you have to have some kind of special a little bit of skills there. Mm -hmm. Um so that's what I really like and enjoy doing. But I also do like hybrid gold crowns, practically everything that they give me, I'm happy to do. <laughs> I'm happy to do. <laughs> <laughs> but you mostly do removable. Did you fall in love with that while in school? Um I don't mostly do remo uh, removable. Well, mostly oh, really? I do, yeah, I do hybrid, so acrylic full arches, acrylic composite wow. full arches. That's something that I do quite a lot. But the yes, the removable are yeah, I don't know. It's just because like everybody always hated them, and I was just interested why. What, what's what's the reason why nobody likes them? And more I start to study and uh, read about it, and you know, read about occlusion and read about the whole. Uh, the way of setting teeth and stuff i understood why nobody likes them <laughs> <laughs> because is if you think about it anything that it's uh, cemented or screwed in the mouth will stay in the mouth so it will it might chip the porcelain it might chip the acrylic or the composite but it will stay in the mouth a bad denture mm -hmm. will not stay in the mouth so it takes a little bit of skill, uh, not only of technical skill, but also from the clinician to take the right impression, to take the bites and stuff. So I just, I just love it. I just love when um, a set of my dentures just work and the patient is happy and the clinician is happy and I'm happy. And I don't know, I just... I just love it. And now with, uh, yeah. yeah, now with composite and stuff, dentures look so much more natural. They are not just a piece mm -hmm. of plastic. So yeah, my artistry is like, uh, I got finally to the artistry to be an artist, let's say. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, mom and dad, you should say. See? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen to your parents. Yeah, they knew me better than what I knew myself, let's say like this. <laughs> so did they teach hybrid in school? I mean, that long ago, that wasn't really a thing. How did you pick it up? No, no, they didn't teach. You you get your basics in school and then you learn from uh, different courses. And if you are lucky, you have good mentors. So mm -hmm. I was uh, lucky that when, uh, when I worked in Slovenia, I actually worked in the lab that was part of an Ivoclar training center. So for oh. those uh, two years yeah. that I was working there, I went on so many courses, <laughs> like everything yeah. that I, everything that I possibly could go, 
I went. So I was lucky that I um, had lots of possibilities, you know, to learn uh, from other yeah. these courses. And then, of course, when I moved to England and uh, when I started to work in my lab now, Dancraft, I was lucky to have great mentors here who taught me the basics. And uh, then I wanted to improve my aesthetics. So I sit down myself and I just practice, practice, practice till I was not happy how it looks as well, mm -hmm. you know, because I was happy with the functions, uh, the function and everything. So I just wanted to improve my aesthetics. And that came just by staring at pictures of teeth. Uh, speaking to technicians that are smarter than me <laughs> and uh, just by practicing because I don't think that people can get to a certain level just by working eight to five. That's yeah. my theory. I might, might be oh, controversial, yeah. but uh, sometimes you have to put a couple of more hours to get to the level that you want to. And not saying, yeah, you know, I don't absolutely think I want to be even better than what I'm now. I don't think I yet reach that level that I want to be, but I'm getting there. I'm pushing, I'm trying hard. So hopefully, you know, I'm, I will, I'll get there. Yeah. I don't think most technicians, I don't think they ever get there. They're always <laughs> looking for improvement. Oh, heck yeah. Always you always see something. See something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ditto. Agree. I'm very self-critical of myself and of my work to the point that sometimes like I have to stop myself and say, Nina, just be kinder to yourself because sometimes mm -hmm. I can, <laughs> I can be too hard on myself. And I think some technicians can definitely do, you know, I speak a lot to, with other technicians recently, especially in this last year and stuff through Instagram and stuff. And everybody has this kind of imposter syndrome, feeling like that they're not oh, yeah. good enough. <laughs> and it's just like, in one way, it's a, it's nice to know that you, you are not alone. But in another <laughs> way, I'm thinking like, oh, you know what, we should be a bit kinder to ourselves because we are sometimes a little bit too harsh. Yeah. You must be born in September. Me? No, I'm born in March. <laughs> First of March. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surrounded by a bunch of September technicians and we are all very, very similar and very very analytical and, and very hard on ourselves. So I, I hear you. Yeah, but it, it is, it is a bit of a, you know, I have some days and stuff where I really feel down and I look at some things that I produce and I'm like, and everybody's telling me it's, it's beautiful. What are you on about? It's, it's perfect. It's, you know, even my clinicians say to me, you know, the patient was so happy and I'm like looking at the picture and I'm thinking, Oh, I could have put a little bit of more of this here or there. It's just like, I don't know. I, I, I think I should, we should all be learn to be a little bit more kinder to ourselves and a bit going easy because in the end we are doing the best we can. And of course, some days we have days off. We are all people. So I'm wondering, after going through all of that, at your laboratory in the UK, do you have any digital? And if so, are you, are you looking at digital dentures at all and any of the designs? Um... I have my theories on digital. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think it's for me personally. I saw the dentures. I saw, I mean, it is the future. It's really interesting. I love the theory and I love everything behind it. But for me personally, for our kind of clientele and from what we think here, it's a nice smile. They are not there yet. Yeah. Yeah. We hear that a lot. Yeah, look what, I mean, also to me, I'm a little bit, uh, because everybody's saying about oh, digital denture, they fit beautifully, they this and that. The people forget that they will fit beautifully, they, they will function beautifully if you can take a good impression, if you can take a good bite, if you can, the same mm -hmm. thing. So it's not a solution for everything. If you are incapable of doing a good traditional impression or a good traditional bite, there is a possibility that even digital uh, uh, denture will not be a solution for you. <laughs> That's what I no. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, and I think even like technicians and stuff, if, you're, if you don't know the rules and if you don't know how to set up the teeth to have a sta stable occlusion and function and stuff, you will struggle again, even in digital. So I know that there is a big faff and there is a big boom about digital and I think it will get there, but I think we need to also teach you know, our technicians and our clinicians first of how to do them properly. Mm. 
and then we're gonna see <laughs> we're gonna see yeah but i mean elvis you follow me on my instagram and stuff yeah do you think that yeah. digital will ever manage to produce what i can produce by hand not straight out of a a printer not yeah. straight out of a mill i mean mm. i think we'll get to the point where with a lot of hand work after yes mm. but you do beautiful stuff on instagram by the way thank you <laughs> yeah i know you're critical of yourself but it's fantastic stuff Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> when did you start posting everything on Instagram? So I started my Instagram around four years ago, but it was not really something, uh, I'm not really a social media addict. Yeah. I wasn't. I am now a little yeah. bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I started to post on Instagram around four years ago, but it was very sporadic and it was not like something mm -hmm. that I, I used to go there or I you know, uh, there would be months that I did not open my Instagram. But in this last yeah. year, because of lockdown, and here in England, we had quite strict rules about movements and uh, stuff. So we spend lots of our time at home on oh, our yeah. phones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So in the last year, I decided, you know, I had a little bit of more time. I was feeling a bit lonely and isolated, like lots of people did. Mm -hmm. So I decided, okay, let's, you know, let's start a little bit more seriously with this Instagram. So I started to post a little bit more things. And, you know, I met fantastic technicians. I mean, I'm so happy that I've, <laughs> that I've not been so lazy, <laughs> that I stopped yeah. being lazy. And because I met fantastic technicians from all around the world, and especially like um, United States. And it's just like a, such a great community, you know, and we support each other and just knowing that we have the same, I don't know, fears or the same problems or some, you know, it's just like a community that supports you in those moments when you think, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of this job. I just want to give up. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I do enjoy it quite a lot. For those that don't know, I mean, I'm relatively new to Instagram. Mm -hmm. Someone recommended about a year, year and a half ago that the podcast should be on it. And I'm like, okay, let's check it out. There is a huge community of dental technicians all around the world. Lots of removable, beautiful stuff. I was amazed how large the community of dental technicians was on Instagram. It's, mm. it's really nice. I recommend anyone in our industry to go check it out. Just join. I'm actually on Instagram right now looking for you, Nina. What? How, where do I go and how do I find you? Ha. Huh. I don't know, neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> Is it your last name, it's, Nina? No, it's Nina underscore F underscore DT. Okay, gotcha. I think I should be there. Yeah, wait till you see this stuff. It almost looks like people's teeth were taken out of their mouth. Well, that's the idea. <laughs> that's yeah. the idea. I think that like, you know, this uh, composite and stuff, this would be such a big game in this digital uh, venture yeah. industry because like you can transform something that looks a little bit more, let's say, simple to me. You know, every country has mm -hmm. a different idea what a perfect smile should be and that's fine. But for me, I like a bit more natural. I know that USA it's a bit more different than <laughs> than Europe, but like yeah. I think that if you use composite to let's say pimp it up, <laughs> pimp up the dentures, <laughs> nice. they should be yeah, yeah, they should be looking like pretty neat. You know, maybe something yeah. like, that's the how to go forward. It looks like you um, twist your laterals a little bit and change the axis on your laterals. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And of course, I'm looking at it. <laughs> Is that your signature, twisting the laterals? That's the, my signature move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, generally, because uh, I try to, of course, some patient wants straight white, and that's fine. You know, I, if they want something like that, of course, I will. In the end, is what the patient wants and what they think it's beautiful. But if I don't have any instructions, like, you know, how will I, how do they want the teeth setting yeah. or any pictures, then I will mm -hmm. always try to sneak just a tiny bit of imperfections in the yeah. setup, just because I think if you're a 70 year old or an 80 year old, and if you have straight white teeth, everybody will know that something there is not right, is yeah. it? <laughs> but if you have Absolutely. a little bit of um, irregularity, 
then, you know, they might not be so visible. And it adds personality. I love it. It's beautiful. Absolutely. That's what I was always told. I'm a ceramist by skill. And, you know, if you tweak the laterals or, you know, you give it a mesial tilt that yeah. it gives it more personality. And I completely agree. Beautiful. Thank you. How is it set up at Dencraft? Do you get to see the patient? Is there a lot of communication or? A lot of communication. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we are very lucky because we are at the top of um, a practice. So underneath, uh, we are at the top of a practice and we work for around uh, nine different dentists in the same building. Some Mm -hmm. days it's like a revolving door in and out of the lab all the time. (laughs) But you can learn so much because, of course, the dentist calls you downstairs. Uh, You can see the patient. You can see your trines. Let's say for my composites, that's perfect because I can shade match them. Mm. I go and do take pictures for shades, for ceramic, for pink, for everything. And, you know, if you do something wrong, they bring you down and they tell you, you know, this is... uh, you should be doing this like this. So you actually can see what you did wrong and it it helps you uh, learn so much faster. You know, when you have actually a patient there in front of you and you can see your mistakes or you can see what did you do right. So yeah, we are lucky. But of course we work also for external clients and the ones that are not in the building, it's just a huge amount of pictures. Picture, Skype, communication, discussions, and this practice here that we work for, it's a referral practice. So, so we get lots of really difficult cases for uh, implant cases. So it's ne- a case mm. will never be straightforward. It will never be like yeah. a nice, easy, all on four. It would always be something, something difficult. <laughs> but the challenge is what I think all technicians here feel the same as I am. These challenges is what keep you interested in the work and what uh, mm-hmm. keep you, push you to be better and to improve yourself. Yeah, it'd be boring to do the exact same case over and over and over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like how she said an all on four. A nice, simple, easy all on four. <laughs> yeah. I caught that. Yeah, it's not, it's not, unfortunately. It's not like, it's never a straightforward <laughs> case. It's always something that, uh, I don't know, a patient is suing a dentist and then they refer the patient here. So you already know oh, that Lord. something is uh, something is wrong <laughs> with everything from the planning to the execution of the case. So you already have a patient that it's riled up, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you have to come down like as the last, uh, you know, wheel because technicians, unfortunately, oh, sh- you know... And, <laughs> They are all crying or already upset and unhappy with their smile. And you're a little bit also like a psychologist, not only a dental technician, but it's all fun. It's all fun and games. It's all part of our job. And, you know, in the end, if I'm still here 20 years after, I love it. Obviously, something must have kept yeah. me here. The man, it's not it. So must be love. <laughs> <laughs> So these patients come from a previous doctor and they have like misplaced implants, not yeah, enough vertical clearance, that kind of, wow. Yeah, it's a referral practice. Yeah. So practically every case that if some implant cases go wrong or something happen or uh, yeah, some stuff like that, we get it yeah. here. So it's a little bit, that's why we have lots of discussions and lots of talk about every case that comes in the lab. It's never like just sit down and let's do it. It's very rare yeah. that it's like that. It's almost always like, oh, this will not work. This will not work. You then spend hours trying to contact somebody to get the right stuff to do the job. Uh, yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> it's <laughs> not easy. Do you get a lot of implants that you don't recognize that you've never worked with? Um, sometimes, more or less. We all, yeah. I don't know how, what, what are your implants in America? What do you use the most? Oh, geez. Uh, what would you say, Barb? The, big, the big variety. The bigger, you know, Strawman, Nobel, Zimmer, BioHorizon. Yeah. yeah. These are more or less. Our big two are uh, Strauman and um, Astra. That's what we use here mainly. But Astra, of course, yeah. we, we have Megagen, we have Neodent, we have, we have lots of different varieties. Not always the one that we don't recognize. But sometimes, of course, some of them come, a copy of something. And that, that's also like, you yeah, know, absolutely. and most of the time the patient have no idea what implant is it or cannot contact the dentist. Oh, yeah. 
yeah we all know <laughs> we all know how that goes and then you spend the days trying to find the bits and bobs to manage to make it work yeah but it is what it is uh, yeah i had a text the other day placed 15 years ago in brazil what is this oh yeah what? I, I, I don't even know what they place in Brazil now. What you... <laughs> oh, I can totally understand. But that's half the fun of the job, you know? That's that's half the fun, trying to figure it out, and the mystery, and the puzzle. It's, it's I enjoy it. Sometimes it is, but sometimes when you see your hair getting like a receding line. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because of the stress of trying to find all this stuff. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. it is part of the job. So if you like it or hate it, you have to deal with it, and that's it. That's true. So in England, do you guys do a lot of zirconia cases, or is it mostly? You said you did gold. Is it still a fair amount of gold? So it's not like uh, I think in uh, America. I mean, uh, it's uh, a lot of zirconia, full large zirconia. What I see from uh, technicians doing here in England. Oh yeah. Um, but that's because uh, your surgeons don't mind chopping off uh, half of the bone of the mouth. <laughs> here, yeah. uh, here, it's all about uh, conservation. So nobody, very rarely people will go and do a, a full surgery and take off lots of bone and stuff. So mainly our structures are still uh, metal based. So you would have mm-hmm. like, or um, as I told you, or acrylic or porcelain or composite or Toronto bridges, like more uh, metal based structures. Mm. I mean, I would love that they like, you know, just go crazy, take away a little bit of, you know, this bone so I can do this beautiful, also zirconia arches with beautiful pink, you know, <laughs> but unfortunately, yeah. mm-hmm. no, <laughs> no, I don't get that. Mine are always very limited with uh, space and always high aesthetic. That's always what I get. Very yeah. limited with space and high aesthetic. And then I don't sleep for two days <laughs> thinking <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> what I like hearing about is like the differences between, you know, the UK and, the, you know, the United States. And when you had mentioned gold, I was thinking, wow, you know, instead of saying zirconia, you mentioned gold. So I was thinking that, you know, that's probably the direction that your laboratory is at. So it's pretty remarkable. And I completely agree. We get some crowns that they just prep the hell out of and just, ugh. so it's good. Good to know. We do zirconia more in the last uh, couple of three, four years, like, you know, mm-hmm. bridges or uh, single crowns and uh, stuff like this. So we do, you know, because I also stay in zirconia. So mm-hmm. we also, we have quite a few people going down that route because of course, you know, people don't want really, you know, metal shining through the gum anymore and stuff, you know, when you have yeah. a little bit of recession, mm-hmm. you always get those problems. Yeah. So, you know, people, are, and plus, you know, zirconia looks nice. It's not so expensive. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah uh, we, we have more, but not unfortunately full arches. I mean, I would love to do it, but I don't know. At least our clients here don't do them. I don't know, maybe somewhere else in uh, the UK they they do, but I'm in quite a few forums and stuff, and I never notice talking about zirconia full arches. So. Yeah, I think we, we don't do a lot here either. Can you imagine how heavy that is for a patient? Oh my god, ugh, just the thought of it. Mm, but we let's so what, say, what? yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Let's say no, like, was... <laughs> go go. <laughs> <laughs> let's say like if we do um, if we do composite or we if I do the uh, the hybrid between acrylic and composite, my bar my metal bar will always be in titanium. So the whole thing, it will be super light. Like it's so light compared yeah, to yeah. some, let's say, porcelain arches that are so heavy. I always used to joke when I get like a porcelain arch or something that it's massive. I'm always like, oh, I hope this patient does not go to swim because we're going to switch- <laughs> <laughs> swim with the fishes. <laughs> it's going to sink. Neck trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
What do you usually do when you get that full arch that has limited vertical space? What's your go-to? There's only so much you can do. Well, yes. Yeah, well, we try to teach all our new dentists, the one that we have on board and stuff, that planning is number one. Yeah. Let's plan it properly. We generally always do or PMMA trines or we do some kind of tooth trine or something. So I always Mm -hmm. more or less, you know, we plan with the spaces. Yeah, so you open that vertical to get what you need. If I have to, yes, if I have to. Yeah. Uh, but we tend always to get that minimum amount of space that we need to make it look decent. Sometimes you cannot mm-hmm. make it look wow, because of course you don't have a massive amount of space. So you, you know, yeah. you're a bit limited. But like we always try to make it look decent because of course some patient you can open five millimeters and they will be fine some patient Mm -hmm. uh, you can open a millimeter and a half and they will immediately have pmj's problems or something else so you have to be like really careful yeah Yeah, really careful how you are playing with uh, the openings and stuff but uh, that's why we do temporaries and stuff and you know sometimes our patients like everybody keeps wearing temporaries and then open ovd uh, to see mm-hmm. if they will tolerate it and stuff. So there is ways, but it's, it's not something straightforward. It's again into the planning and and every dentist that we work with, they are on board with our way, you know, our protocol of doing things because it's bulletproof. They know that at the yeah. end, what they will get, the patient will be happy, they will be happy, and in the end, and they will not have problems. So even if it takes a bit longer, uh, you know, a bit of a longer road to get there, sometimes it's better. Yeah. So, yeah. Agree. It's always better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you design the bars or do you guys send those out? So what we do, we use Atlantis or Creotech for uh, our... Yeah. yeah. So what we do, we would have a trine and stuff, scan it in, send the scan of the trine to Atlantis or whoever we are choosing to use in that moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, they will send back the design of the bar. Uh, one of us check it over to make sure that everything is fine and then we approve it or we ask for changes depending on sure how it's going. Is that made there in the UK or is it Atlantis? Does it come here to America? No, no. Atlantis is in... Uh... Rob, where is Atlantis? In Belgium. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, the, yeah, the superstructures in, are in Belgium while the abutments and stuff is made in Sweden. Mm. So it's all in Europe, oh. practically. Yeah. yeah, okay. Rob just got a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> Rob is my manager. He is here like, if I forgot some English words, he will be like, uh, Nina, help. <laughs> I will like, Rob, help. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, my English still eludes me, especially when I'm tired and then I forget words. So uh, Rob helps me sometimes <laughs> in expressing myself. <laughs> I work with somebody from Bosnia um, that came oh. over to the U.S. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, I, I can't understand you today. You're talking Bosnian and it's our English and it just cracks me up. So I'm, I'm pretty used to it. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sometimes Rob is very good with charades because I, some, some days I'm like, <laughs> Rob, give me the thing for the thing. And he knows what I mean. After 10 years, after 10 years of working with me, he knows. <laughs> so it's like, I always, I always tell him he's like a brother I never wanted. But I got. It's a good thing to call your manager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of composite do you use? Oh, well, I use variation of different composites. So depending, okay. I tried quite a lot of them. I'm a total composite snob, like hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yes, yes. Some people have, I am a composite snob. So I tried quite a few of them. And recently, I just started to use Anaxdent from... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, great stuff. Yeah. Well, because one of my American friends, he was like, you know, you have to try Anaxdent, you have to try Anaxdent. I'm like, okay, let's try this Anaxdent. But I'm like, you know, I'm ready. <laughs> I'll tell you if I don't like it. And yeah, uh, yeah I loved it. So it's uh, yeah. yeah. So it's now in my um, well. I mainly use Anaxdent for all my uh, hybrids now, and uh, mm-hmm. for my uh, denture work, uh, I use uh, Nexco from Ivoclar. So I have mm. this, Ivoclar, yeah. Yeah. So these two are my uh, most favorite ones, and they are the ones that I use all the time. And I'm I'm just happy I tried Anaxdent. So 
Yay for Alex then. <laughs> when you say you'll tell them if you don't like it. So what what are the positives of a composite that you really like? Like what are the differences? I'm, I'm I don't do composites, so that's a it may sound like a stupid question, but I'm curious. So what makes it great? Yeah, it's not a stupid question. I think everybody is different. So everybody will search for some sp specific stuff. For me, if it's that it's easy to manipulate. So uh, it's not like sliding around or something, but if I put it somewhere yeah. that stays, colors are very important. Like I tried quite a few. These are one of the most important thing, the colors. I tried quite a few and I just don't like the shades there or too orange or just not natural. So with Annex Dent and uh, Nexco, the shades are just beautiful. Like, with, especially with Annex Dent, you are bulletproof. You, you cannot do a mistake because the shades are just so great. And Annexco is great because it's a little bit more transparent. So it has a bit mm -hmm. of transparency. Uh, while mm -hmm. Annex Dent has slightly, slight a bit of opacity. So it's great for hybrids and stuff, you know, when you try to cover up metal and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. For me, it's just that I can be quick with it. So, you know, some composite, you try to put them on and they're just sliding around. They're like little snakes going all, all the way around. <laughs> well, this one, I just stuck, take my piece, I uh, stuck it up and it stays there. Uh, perfect mm -hmm. color does not change. And Makes it's just sense. like, yeah, it's, it's lovely. And it's lovely to polish as well and stuff. I mean, some people don't polish composite. Some people used to put some glazes over it. Some people polish them. I depends on the job. But when I polish my composite, I also do not want to spend hours trying to polish it. I just want to sit down, do it, and, you know, so that it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. And both of these yep. composites I'm quite happy with. So, yeah, those are my two favorites. Can you intermix them? Can you use, like, the incisal of one and the body of another? Uh, every, <laughs> how you say, every person will tell you different, uh, you know, especially every company will tell you, no, don't do yeah. that. Yeah, of yeah, course. yeah, yeah. Of course. I, okay. I, 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 mix them, I mix and match. I have also some composites from Breeden, some composites from Shotlander, some composites, there are lots of types of it. And uh, sometimes in some cases, not on every case, but in some cases, yeah, I mix a match because just because this one has uh, a little bit more lighter pink or, you know, less mm -hmm. opacity and stuff. So I definitely mix a match. Nice. And they're all light cured, right? Yeah. As long as you treat, as you, uh, so you have to start, like, as long as you treat it uh, properly, they will work. Mm -hmm. They're all light cure. So as long as you treat your timings right, as long as you treat like your base coat and stuff right, everything will be fine, even if you mix them much. Cool. Thank you. Interesting. Yeah, because I, 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 worked, no uh, yeah, I worked with composite for the last five years and I never had a delam delamination, not once. I think that that says something. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that says something. I'll say. In the UK, don't they have economy dentures or is it like here in america where you have those places you can go to get a lesser yeah lesser cost denture oh yeah does everybody make them like you no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no but i make also simple dentures like not like it's not economy but just like let's say ivo base material uh, mm -hmm. so they are still a high standard denture with uh, high standard materials they don't just have the let's say the bells and whistles that some of uh, sure. the dentures have. So I, I do still do normal uh, traditional acrylic work. There are some places, yeah, of course, not our lab because we do only private high-end work. Yeah. But there are some places, of course, that you can get like cheaper dentures for cheaper value with cheaper teeth. Uh, uh, yeah. They are generally one-man bands. Uh, that's how we call them, one-man uh, lab. No, one man band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you can, you can. But uh, then again, I don't know, for me, I, I might be a bit of a snob in teeth as well, because like for me, I, you know, teeth are something that you wear all your life. Yeah. It's something you eat with, it's something you sleep with, it's something that impacts your health. And I think that people should pay a bit more to get something amazing 
And, you know, I know that not everybody can afford it. I can totally understand. But if you yeah. have the possibility, I think that, you know, you should splurge out on your teeth because that's something that you wear every day. And in the end, it's, uh, you know, presenting you to the world, let's say like that. Do you have a hard time doing those dentures when you have so much passion for the bells and whistles, as you said? No, because um, five years, like, you know, I... I did not know that these composites and stuff existed till five years ago. And yeah. for me, doing traditional dentures, it's I'm passionate about any kind of denture. I'm like, it's just because for me, it's more about the occlusion, you know, especially yep. when I get like some ridges yeah. that are like wildly flat and stuff. And I have to choose which uh, scheme to go with and stuff. To me, it's just like in a, uh, how it's called a competition against myself i uh, mm. it does not matter it does not have to be of course i love the bells and whistles and i like my little artistry and stuff but i think i just like to make people smile and i want to it doesn't yeah. matter if it's a cheap denture or an expensive denture i just want that, that person feel confident they can eat they can smile and you know just can be a happy person so to yeah. me, it does not matter what kind of denture i'm making or what kind yeah. of bridge that's great. Well said. I, I agree. Have you ever participated in the Panthera Cup? Ha! <laughs> wow. Where the hell did you pull that question? <laughs> Have you heard of it? Um, hmm. So I heard of it because of yeah. my American friend told me <laughs> that we should participate together. And to see who wins. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, oh damn. You threw down a that was a couple of... Oh, I love a challenge. Oh, I'm a sucker uh-huh. for a challenge. <laughs> uh, that was a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, he cannot because he's very busy. So I bite at it. And I um, decided to participate this year. So, good. Wow. Well, that is a, a really good story, actually, because I did not know what is it exactly what's going to happen and stuff. So I went uh-huh. to the podcast to listen. Um, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, yep. Yeah. So I listened to the podcast and I listened to uh, what they were talking and you and stuff. And I was like, oh, OK, I have to do this and I have to do this. And then a couple of days after, I was like, OK, I need to write him. I need to write him, I need to ask him, I need to ask him this question. But I was like, I was like a little bit uncertain how to approach him on Instagram, you know, like a weird girl <laughs> asking, his, yeah. asking his help. But weirdly enough, I posted a picture of one of my jobs and he contacted me. He sent me a message oh. telling me, Nina, did you ever think of participating to the Master Cup? And I would like you, I would like to nominate you. Oh, nice. and, he, awesome. and he said to me that he took inspiration from my composite work for his uh, submission for his work for his competition yes for the pantera master cup wow so he yeah. took inspiration i mean he came i think second or third he came from the show lab group yeah there. second or yeah. third yeah yeah and so practically he wrote me that he took inspiration from my composite and he wants to nominate me to compete in the pantera (laughs) master cup awesome so i was like what what here i am thinking i'm not good enough and the guy that uh, was one of the three best technicians in this like competition is telling me he uh, got inspired by my pictures i was so i was so happy (laughs) yeah that's awesome yeah, it was very, very good. That's a huge compliment, too. Yeah, it was. It was. Because sometimes, as I told you, I can be really hard on myself with lots of technicians. And I think, you know, it's hard to see. I don't know why we can see greatness in others, but we cannot see greatness in ourselves sometimes. So yeah, that was like, it made my day, my month, my week. My, I was so happy. That <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was super happy. That's great. So when does the competition start? Has it started this year? Um, I did not. I mean, I uh, I know that he submitted my name. And uh, I mean, yeah. before that, I also submitted my name because I did not expect that he will say this. Uh, I yeah. did not get no email yet or nothing. So I'm okay. not sure that yeah. uh, it started yet. But I'm waiting now. <laughs> I'm waiting to see what, yeah. what will happen. That's exciting. I'd love to hear about your journey. Watch it on Instagram because I bet it's going to be awesome. Where is it at? It's out of Panthera. So it's out of K 
Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah, and every year they have people from all over the world, and they all get the same case in the same type of bar. Mm. And then they have this huge competition. And Beatrice over there at Panthera, she kind of heads up the thing, and it's cool. Every year, Mark Williamson won it one year. A bunch of people. It's it's really neat. Well, I remember we talked about it, but I just couldn't remember um, where exactly it was. So you're yeah. at- travel there or you can you do it virtually or how does that work no practically what they do is they send you so first you have to submit it's not like that you get, go straight to the to the competition you first yeah have, you have to submit a case that you did mm-hmm. and stuff and do a little bit of a writing thing that's what i understood and then they choose from all the submission the 10 best ones and then these 10 best <clears> ones <throat> get sent the case that they choose the different bar or whatever so Mm -hmm. to to the technician and then you have a specific amount of time i think it's quite long actually where you do the um, where you do this job and you have to document like why you choose these teeth why you did this and stuff practically and then you send it back to them and i think that before covid they used to fly the contestant to canada i'm pretty sure like uh, to see to the like a big reveal who is the three winners but uh, of mm-hmm. course, now from when COVID hits, uh, I, I don't think it will be possible this year still. I'm not sure how your rules are still, but here in England, we are still a bit weird on international travels. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure it will be possible to be flying. And so it will be probably a virtual thing, like to see who won. And nice. Who. Usually they let the winner speak at their booth at the IDS. Oh, oh that's wow. really good. Yeah. Okay, so here I am. Where is next ITS? I have to start to prepare the speech. <laughs> I love the confidence. I am a very modest person. <laughs> you just got to remember to thank the podcast. Yes. yes. But you have to have it in, with intention. You have to go in this kind of stuff with intention of winning. I think oh, maybe hell yeah. I, I failed miserably, but at least it would be such an amazing experience. So, I, you know, I, pl- I plan to win it. That's how I go into this. There you go. <laughs> That's how I nice. go into this. <laughs> oh, maybe I will flop and, uh, you know, next time, <laughs> next time you can joke with me and say, hey, Nina, did you win that Pantera? No, shut up, Elvis, don't mention it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, Nina, what's next for you and Dentcraft? Do you still get to do a lot of continuing education with them? Yes. Well, what I hope my next stage will be, I would love to teach. Oh, so nice. I would, yeah, I would love to uh, get into that a little bit more, like to do some courses with composites and uh, stuff uh, like that, because that's my big passion. And it seems that lots of technicians are really getting into that. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, uh, for me, when I started the composites and stuff, I did not have so much of um, support, you know, from the technician mm-hmm. that I used to ask questions and stuff because I was a little technician and nobody wanted, you know, how they swat you off like a little fly. <laughs> 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 they don't want to lose time with you. So, like, you know, I would like to, yeah, I would like to teach. I would like to help uh, technicians better themselves and, you know, reach that next level because I think there are lots of, you know, technicians out there that do want to improve and stuff. And maybe they're a little bit, uh, you know, don't know where to go or don't know who to turn to. So, yeah, that's something I would uh, I would like to do. Nice. Awesome. You got to come to Chicago Lab Day and teach for an extent. Well, you said it. I mean, whoever is listening to this podcast, <laughs> I think Elvis is so smart and he gives some great <laughs> ideas. <laughs> I mean, I would absolutely, absolutely love to do that. That's why yeah. that's that's my secret dream. <laughs> that's my secret uh-huh. dream. I would love to go anyway, come to Chicago. And at some point I will definitely do because I met so many amazing technicians in America that I just have to meet in person, that I just have to sit down and have a beer with these people and just uh, have a chat eye to eye because last year was hard for everybody and they made it so much easier just by, you know, uh, having this little community and talking to each other and just complaining about, you know, work, about everything. It was just like, I just have to meet them. 
so hopefully yeah i will uh, there will be the time that i come and you know i have a beer also with you too because why not <laughs> <laughs> why not yeah that the online community for dental technicians really grew over the pandemic and it was it was nice to see so many people connect yeah, absolutely. Also here, you know, in England and stuff, you know, you meet people on your courses and stuff, but that's that's about it. Then you don't see each other anymore and <laughs> that's it. Well, uh, on this pandemic and stuff, I met so many other uh, dental technicians also here from England and that I would never have probably the opportunity to meet. And we are sure. really, you know, I had a really difficult case this week and I was not sure what to do. So I called my, uh, so I met this uh, technician. He is from Scotland. So I called him mm. like through Instagram and I was like, can I call you? Because I have, because I know that he does a lot of these kind of cases while I don't. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh, can I give you please a ring on Instagram and you can help me just step by step? Because of course, you know, I am an experienced technician. Yes. But do I know everything? No, <laughs> there is always room for yeah. improvement. And he answered my call and he helped me out and the job turned out beautiful. And, you know, it's just that, that you can have somebody on the other side of the phone to ring if there is a problem or something while before you had to sit down and just like uh, spend days on the internet trying to search <laughs> the solution yeah yeah if someone didn't make a video about it you're a lot of luck yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> yes if that is not on youtube we are not uh, we are not gonna make it <laughs> if it's not on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's hilarious all the way to scotland huh that's cool mm -hmm. Well, Nina, we appreciate you coming on the podcast. That's some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I love seeing what you're doing on Instagram. I encourage everyone to go check it out and see this amazing composite that you do. It's oh, thank you. <laughs> you get me all red or blushed. <laughs> <laughs> I already did, and I echo it. It's absolutely stunning. Beautiful work. Thank you work. so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Like if that kind of work was in our lab, I wouldn't even know what to do with it. It's so out of our league, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it's it's almost too good <laughs> for America. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That, that's a little bit of a big compliment, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. I don't think it is. I think uh, it's, as I told you before, it's just like different countries have different ideas what a perfect smile is, you know? We like yeah. a little bit more natural, a little bit more crooked, while your patients, they like a little bit, uh, you know, straight and a little bit more uh, on the whiter side. Yeah, bright white. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. But, you know, if you look at technicians in Brazil or if you look at technicians in Australia, everybody has a different smile or concept of what a perfect smile is. And that's what makes us unique. If we are all the same, then what's, you know, what's the point? Is it? Yeah. There's Elvis's dogs. They're, dog. they're wishing you yeah. good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, doggo. <laughs> <laughs> Something's got her riled up. Well, Nina, thank you so much. We appreciate you. you coming on the podcast. Oh, thank great. you so much, guys, for having me. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, hopefully we'll see you in Chicago sometime. Hopefully. Yeah. Yes, hopefully. On the Annex Dent boot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give Tay a call right when we're done. Oh, so my you know. God. She is amazing. Like, bless her. I speak yeah. to them as well. Like, they are a cool bunch of people, but all of them. So. Great bunch. Awesome. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. So thank you so much for coming on our podcast, Nina. It was super great to talk to a technician, especially from overseas, learn about what is different and similar with our industry. Nina does fantastic work, and you will be a better technician if you head over to Instagram and look her up. If you missed it, type in... N-I-N-A underscore F underscore D-T and give her a follow. Beautiful stuff. We wish the best to you in the Pantera Master Cup. We know that you're going to crush it. We can have you back on when you win. So good luck. But everyone will get a chance to see more from her when she makes her dream come true and does a hands-on course at Lab Chicago. Right, Tay? We know we have many listeners in many different countries and we want to hear from you. So again, reach out to us at info at voicesfromthebench.com. We can set up a time for you to be on the podcast and tell us about all the amazing things that you are doing in your country. 
And we know for a fact, because Elvis takes stats on this, that we have lots of listeners out there from other countries. So hit us up. So we are just three weeks away from Ladies of the Mill Summit. This amazing event is happening in Chattanooga, Tennessee on July 23rd and 24th. Voices from the bench will be at the Preet booth recording all the amazing attendees, speakers, and maybe some of the sponsors. Heck, anyone we can get to sit down at the booth. Male or female, head over to ladiesofthemill.com to register and we will see you there. Nice. All right, everybody. That's all we got for you. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. That was depressing. Bye. 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 (laughs) All right, you ready? Yeah, ready. Are you ready, buddy? All right.